Usually, whenever you see a problem based on strings, what is the first thing that you do? You start from the first character, go one at a time, applying all the operations necessary, right? Hoping that somewhere around the way you will find a quick solution, right? But sometimes when you go in the reverse direction, you can find an even better solution. There is actually a problem on lead code, backspace string compare, that explores this idea. Let us see what all of this is about. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we will see the most naive way to approach this problem and see why that is not a good one. Going forward, we will try to find the most efficient solution to solve this problem both time-wise and space-wise. And then we will also do a dry run of the code so that you understand how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let us try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given two strings and you have to determine if they are equal when typed in a text editor. Along with that, you are given an extra piece of information. A hash character represents a backspace. So what does all of this mean? The best way to understand it is to understand the given sample test cases. So let us look at our test case number one. You can see that we have two strings and these strings also have a hash character, right? What happens when I try to type in this first string into my text editor? So let me just quickly open up a text editor. Okay, so now first of all, I will type A, then I will type B, then I have a hash character, right? A hash means a backspace. So I do a backspace and then I type my next character and that is C. So what do we see over here? We see that this string literally translates to AC only, correct? Similarly, let us do the same operation for our second string as well. I once again open my text editor. I have A, then I have a D, then I have a hash, right? So do a backspace. The next character I have is C. So just put C in here. Now see that both of these strings have translated to A and C when typed in a text editor, right? And now you just need to tell me when typed in a text editor, are these strings same? For our first test case, these two strings are same, right? So I'm just gonna output true. And this will be your answer. Similarly, you can work out test case number two as well. Your string S will be A and then B, and then you have two hash, right? So you're pressing the backspace character two times. So in the first time B will be deleted and then A will be deleted. So the string S literally becomes an empty string, correct? Now look at string T. I have C and then I press a backspace. Then I have D and then I press a backspace again. So T also translates to an empty string. Once again, both of these are same. So I will return true as my answer. Similarly, let us look at our third and final test case as well. What does the first string S translate to? So I get S equals to A then a backspace and then C. The next string is B, right? So you can see that the first string translates to C and the second string translates to B. Now both of them are different. So in the test case number three, you need to return false as your answer. Now, if you have understood this problem statement correctly, feel free to try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. As a good developer, you should always try to start off with the first solution that comes to your mind. And then you can try to optimize it. So as soon as you see this problem, I have two strings, right? And I have to determine if typed into a text editor, will they be the same? So I know that what do I have to do? First of all, I have to translate these strings into their original forms such that they don't have the hash character and then just compare them, right? So a naive way would be to reconstruct both of these strings. What I'm going to do is I will first add the first character A, then I will add the next character that is B and then I see a hash, right? So my intention would be that, okay, remove the first character and then create a new string again. Then I get a A. I see a hash again. So again, remove the last character and then construct a new string. Ultimately, this string will be empty, right? Similarly, you can approach the next string also and then get the final string. This will again be empty string and voila, you solved the problem, right? But if you see, if you're approaching this problem in this way, 
you go ahead, you find a hash and then you reconstruct a string. You will be wasting so much time trying to reconstruct these strings and it will take up a lot of space in your memory as well, right? What happens if your string becomes so large? What will you do then? If you try to approach this problem in the same way, you will do A and then B and then you see a hash. So you remove B, you create a new string A, right? Next, you see a C, then you see a D, then E, then a hash again. So you remove the E and then reconstruct the string. Then you have the F character and then you see a hash again. So once again, you will remove F and then you are reconstructing the same string again, right? And then you see a hash again. So this D will be also removed. So you can see the problem, right? You are traversing the string again and again just to reconstruct the same string. So definitely this approach is not ideal. We need to find some efficient solution. What can we do about it? Okay, so now let us try to think of this problem in an efficient manner. First of all, you must know that you have to translate these strings into their text editor version, right? And once they're translated, we just need to compare them. So the most tricky part is converting these strings. So let us just only focus on that. Let me take up one sample string with me, right? The longer one. And then we will try to determine what is the text editor version of it. Now, before starting off, let me show you one concept. Let us say I have a string like A, B, C, D, correct? And I ask you, traverse each character and recreate the original string. So obviously there is one method like you can start with a character A, then you can do A plus B, then you can do plus C, and then you can do plus D. So this will give you the string A, B, C, D, right? But there is one more way to recreate the string and that is going in the backward direction. So what do you do then? You take up your first character and that is D, right? Now, what is the next character? The next character is C. So instead of adding C to the right of D, what you can do is you can add C to the left of D, right? Now think about it. What is the next character? That is B. So add B to the left of C and then add A also. So you can see that both of these strings when added up will give you A, B, C, D and they are both the same, right? So try to think why we are doing it this way. When you see a hash character, that means you have to remove one of the characters that you found on the left side, right? So it could be a good idea to traverse the string from the right. If I don't see any hash character on the right, that means this character will not be deleted, right? So when I'm traversing the string, start from the very end, take up a pointer that points at Y and we will go all the way to the beginning. So I get my first character and that is Y. I know this will never be deleted. So I just write down Y in my actual string, right? Now move this pointer. Now we point to X. Since you do not see any hash over here, just add this character to the left of X. Now move ahead. And this is where things becomes interesting. I get a hash character. As soon as we get a hash, it means that I have to delete some characters and we will see what comes in the future. As soon as I see a hash, just increment the hash count. So I get a one in here. Now move one step ahead. I see a hash again. So simply increment the hash count. Going ahead, I have a next character and that is F. Now, as soon as you see a character, you need to determine was there a backspace ahead of it? If yes, you have to delete it, right? So as soon as you see a character, look at your hash count. Hash count is two, correct? That means this character will be deleted and it will not appear in your actual string. So what we're gonna do is, we will decrement the count of hash and we will not add this character to my actual string. So now my pointer moves to hash again. I see one more hash. So increment the count. The next character I see is a E. The hash count is two. So I decrement it by one and I will not add it to my string. Going ahead, I see the character D. Once again, the hash count is one. So what I'm gonna do is I will decrement this hash count and change it to zero. Going ahead, I get my next character and that is C. Now look at the hash count. This is zero, right? It means that I have taken care of all the backspace characters that came ahead of it. So this means that this C will be included in my actual string. So what I'm just gonna do is I will add a C to the left of X. So this way, what we're gonna do is you'll once again move ahead, you get a hash. 
So this value changes to one. Once again, you move one step backward. So the value of hash count changes to zero. You move one step ahead again, you get an A. Your hash count is zero. So you will add A to your actual string. So ultimately, your equivalent string will be A, C, X, and Y. So you can see how only in a single iteration, we were able to determine our string in the editor, right? Now, let us try to do a dry run of the code and see how this actually works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have these two strings S and T that is passed in as an input parameter to the function backspace compare. We know that we just need to get the actual strings and then compare them. If they are equal, return a true, else return a false. So let us just try to focus on the method get actual. How does it work? Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. Moving on with a dry run, what do we do in our method get actual? First of all, we create an empty string that will store my actual string and then we initialize our hash count to zero. Next, what we do is we start a for loop that will start at the very end of the string and go all the way up to the beginning, correct? First of all, we check if the character is a hash character. If yes, what do you do? You just increment your hash count and then skip it, correct? You don't have to do anything with it. But if your character is not a hash, what do you do? You check if the hash count is greater than zero. If yes, what do you have to do? You have to skip the character and do a hash count minus minus. Otherwise, if the hash count is zero, you just have to insert whatever character you're getting in your actual string. So once this loop completes, you will get your actual string in this method and then you can just return it. The time complexity of this solution is order of n. That is because we are iterating through the string only once and the space complexity of this solution is also order of n because you need to store these actual strings somewhere, right? I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you see problem based on strings, first try to traverse the string from the front all the way to the back and then also try to come up with a solution traversing from the back all the way to the front. Try to compare both of these approaches and then try to determine which one of them will be a faster one. Usually starting from the middle is not a good idea unless and until you see problems that revolve around palindrome. If there are palindromes, yes, starting from the middle can be a good idea. So always keep that in mind. Which other problems did you see where you could find a faster solution going from the reverse direction? Tell me everything in the comment section below. Also tell me if you faced any problem while solving this problem. Can you find some other solutions to it? I would love to help you all of out. You would be also glad to know that a text-based explanation to this content is available on the website studyalgorithms.com, a pretty handy website for your programming needs. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what you want to learn next. Until then, see ya.